abandonment phase. The abandonment phase begins when the psychopath decides that his or her victim is no longer useful. The psychopath abandons his or her victim and moves on to someone else. In the case of romantic relationships, a psychopath will usually seal a relationship with their next target before abandoning his or her current victim. Sometimes the psychopath has three individuals on whom he or she is running gay. The one who has been recently abandoned, who is being toyed with and kept in the picture in case the other two don't work out. The one who is currently being explained and is about to be abandoned and the third who is being groomed by the psychopath in anticipation of abandoning the current mark. According to Pat Peterson, techniques are the manipulative tools used by a manipulator to take control over their target victims. They fall within three main areas, environment, information, ideology. Have you ever found yourself feeling pressured to do something because everyone around is doing it? That is an example of how your environment can influence you. Are you aware of how many different environments you move through in a single day? More than you may realize, each of those environments is a potential place of manipulative attack. Have you ever heard the saying, information is power? It is more true that many of us know. Have you ever been misinformed about a relationship and chosen a direction you might not have go gone otherwise? This ha happens often enough in regular circumstances. In the hands of a manipulator, it becomes a powerful Weapon. In your profession or hobbies, do you use jargons, words that mean sometimes different than in usual conversation? If I told you I was firing in a reducing atmosphere, would you have a clue of what I was talking about? Probably only if you are a potter. Wink. Jargon is normal. We accept it without much through. Manipulators However, use jargon to influence and drive their victims. Each of the above is a possible avenue for manipulation uh, through information. Do you think world peace is a good idea? The majority of, you, of us will probably say resorting yes, but in the hands of a manipulator, such worthy ideas and goals are nothing more than tools. Do you like the feeling that you are special? That you are part of something wonderful? Such ideas are part of the drawing king process and the manipulative tool of us with them. What happens when your boss says, do it my way or else? You will definitely feel a pressure to confirm to the requirements. Such pressure can be applied in many ways. When you have gotten to a certain point in a manipulative relationship, the manipulator will use the tool of ideology to break your internal strengths down even further by showing you that you are wrong or mistaken. Have you ever felt that you have not measured up? That you just were not good enough at something? Such feelings and experiences also became weapon in the hands of manipulator. Time refers to how our toy dolls and the manipulator's techniques are together through time to draw in the manipulator's victim. There are six stages in the process of time. Softening up, compliance, identification, consolidation, disaffiliation and recovery. Have you ever seen Annette read a book told to a stranger while waiting for an airplane? Gone on a date, then you may have already entered the softening up phase with a manipulator. Do you ever do something you would not do otherwise because someone asked you to? Many of us will a manipulator knows his 
uh, and works on their targeted victims, pollutants, and religions in order to draw them deeper into their relationship. Do you sometimes identify yourself through another person or talk to a group? For example, hi, I am Joy, Mary's husband, or I am part of the X, Y, or Z organization. In a manipulative relationship, this is part of the manipulator's plan. People can be manipulated to the point of identifying themselves primarily or solely to their relationship with the ultra authority. Uh, their own sense of identity as an individual has been destroyed. Nothing of the old you remains, you are now about what the manipulator wants. This is the stage of the relationship that most extreme manipulators are aiming for complete control over their target victim. Have you ever dumped somebody? It is much harder to leave a relationship you have been manipulated into, but it can be done. For someone who has disaffiliated from a manipulator, there are often some very serious concerns which must be met right away. Personal safety, food, clothing, shelter, and financial assist have often been stripped out of the control of the individual. There are also long-term effects. Recovering from such levels of manipulation takes time. A great deal of effort and understanding of what happened to you. Basic manipulative skills. There is only one way to get anybody to do anything and that is by making the other person want to do it. How manipulators are hidden reasons and feelings? If you ask a person the reason for his behavior, chances are he will come up with an excuse. Manipulators know this and will formulate their question differently. They might ask, why won't you do things my way? And next ask, is there any reason in addition to uh, that? And uh, then keep silent and observe their victim's reaction. In the same way, in order to find out how somebody really feels about something, they may surprise him with the direct questions and then observe his reactions. Avoidance of conflict and persistence of the hidden weapons of manipulation. You may think there is nothing you want from your friends or colleagues. A manipulator is uh, always aware that one day you may be in a position to contribute in one way or another in the pursuit of his interest. That is why he will choose his disagreements and pick his battles very carefully. After all, arguments uh, are beaten through it, so what's the use of a disagreeing or arguing on subjects that don't directly affect their interests or of arguing with people that they have no personal connection with. Instead, manipulators speak the a real language and will often stress how we like they fell to their victims. I don't blame you for that. I have been there myself. I know how you feel. They are very good at pointing out areas of argument and at appealing to common values. We both want you to have what you want and deserve. I don't want to cause you trouble any more than you do yourself. They overcome objects uh, by providing good reasons why it is in the victim's best interest to do what they propose. And often used scam leads agree with the feelings of the victims, stress areas of arguments, overcome objections uh, by giving good reasons adding an it's for your best interests only, I don't need you, disclaimer. Example, yes, I know what you mean and I'm sure the 9 out of 10 times uh, then would be the right thing to do. However, this case has some very unusual 
circumstances uh, that make it a little different. Just like you, I wish things were easier, better, cheaper, not so risky. But I know that you want to get the best deal and I want you to get the best price, to be completely satisfied. You have looked around yourself and you already know that the best things in life demand some risk. Taking a little chance is always something you have to live with. You can't buy one like this for any less anywhere anyway. It's up to you to decide, of course. After all, my only desire is to help you succeed in any way that I can. After all, I don't want to see you run into trouble with your wife. Manipulators generate that. Manipulators rarely argue directly against an idea or proposal. They will rather first praise their victim for his ideas, but they create confusion or doubt. That's an excellent idea, but if we look more deeply, or I agree with what you say, but have you considered it? Manipulators reduce resistance with suggestive questions. Surely everybody will agree that this simple line that we read and hear regularly is the standard example of a suggestive question. Wikipedia, as a free encyclopedia, describes the suggestive questions as the questions that implies that a certain answer should be given in response or falsely presents a presumption in the question as a kept fact. Such a question distorts the memory, thereby thinking the person into answering in a specific way that might or might not be true or consistent with the actual feelings and can be deliberate or unintentional. For example, the praising, don't you think this was wrong, is more suggestive than do you think this was wrong, despite the difference of only one word. The former may subtly pressure the respondent into responding yes, where the latter is far more direct. Repeated question can make people think the first answer is wrong and lead them to change their answer. Or it can cause people to continuously answer until the interrogator gets the extract response that they desire. The diction used by the interview can also be an influencing factor to the response given by the interrogative individual. Uh, direct questions lead to one or the answer when explanation uh, are something needed. This could include questions like, do you get it? And where did it happen? Um, an expert in persuasion and communications direct questions for the truck responsible through carefully worded questions. Repeated uh, suggestive questions. Repeated uh, questions uh, elicit certain types of answers. Repeated questions make people think their first answer was wrong, lead them to change their answer or cause people to keep answering until the interrogator gets the extract response that they desire. Elizabeth Loftus states that errors in answers are dramatically reduced if a question is only asked once. Fourth choice suggestive questions, yes, no, or fourth choice question like, is this yellow or green? Force people to choose them between two choices when the answer could be neither of the choices or needs more explanations. This generates more interviewer talks moments where the interviewer is talking and controlling most of the interview. This type of question is also known as a false dilemma. For choice is often used in sales relations. Should I call you Monday or Wednesday assumes that you want to talk again. The first meeting will be the next Tuesday, assumes you will participate. Do you prefer the blue 
one or the red one as soon as you want the article. Press symptoms, suggestive questions. Press symptoms questions can either be balanced or unbalanced. Unbalanced questions ask questions only from the point of view of one side of an argument. For example, an interrogator might ask, do you favor the death penalty for persons convicted of murder? This question assumes that the person's only point of view in the situation is that the person who uh, is convicted must uh, either get the death penalty or not. The second type of uh, pre-symptoms question is balanced question. This is when the integrator uses opposite question to make the witness believe that uh, the question is balanced when the reality is that it is not. For example, the interrogator would ask, do you favor life in prison without the possibilities parole? Uh, this uh, two uh, type of question may seem balanced when in reality it is still influencing the person to discuss life in a prison and uh, not other choice. Confirmatory suggestive questions. Confirmatory questioning leads to answers that can only suffer a certain point. Here the interviewer forces the person to make sure his or her answers make them out to be extroverted or introverted. If they want them to look extroverted, they would ask questions like how do you make a party more fun and when are you talk, uh, talkative? Uh, if they want the person to look introverted, they ask questions like have you ever been left out of a group or can you be more hyper sometimes? Manipulators can be very persistent. They decide what they want and resolve not to quite until they get it. Mentally, I kept it the consequence or no failure, but uh, do everything uh, in their power to avoid failure. Well, you know, to learn something from every experience of self-examination. They will not hesitate to compromise on some detail in order to start a pattern of concessions and know the importance of getting a yes on a smell concession and work their way up from there by always adding to the concession. They are carefully to avoid painful moments of decision. Uh, in case of doubt, they will readily assume their victim agreed and take appropriate action. I will call him now and make the necessary reservation. They know that nobody like to feel he owns a debt to somebody else and pass in order uh, to prevent them from feeling ungrateful often succeed in making their victims pay in advance for the favors they are going to do them i will help you out if you first help me with uh, these little problems that i'm having Manipulators, masters, and laws of influence. Manipulators uh, instinctively use Cialdini's laws uh, of influence. Robert Cialdini is a regents professor emeritus of psychology and marketing at Arizona State University. He is best known for his book or pursuits and marketing influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. Uh, Influence has sold over 2 million copies and uh, has been uh, translated into 26 languages. It has been uh, listed on the New York Times Business Bestseller List, Fortune Magazine List, Influence in their uh, 75 Smartest Business Book. Now, in writing the book, he spent three years going undercover applying for jobs and training at used car dealership, fundraising organizations, and telemarketing firms to observe real-life situations of per 
persuades. The book also reviews many of the most important theories and experiments in social psychology. The law of reciprocity or law of obligation. People feel obliged uh, to return a favor when somebody uh, does something for them first. By granting uh, favors, manipulators create a situation.